This video includes a paid sponsorship from Factor, but I'll talk more about that later. I recently reached out to one of my sources who has been a very reliable source of information in the past, and I asked them for insight into what can be seen in these Giga Texas cell production area images that were shared by drone pilot Joe Tegmeyer on Twitter. In this video, I want to discuss some of what was revealed to me regarding these images and also talk a little bit about, in the midst of that conversation, how Gigafactory Texas has improved over the Fremont pilot facility based on what we can see in these images. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. In a past video, I did discuss some of the things that I personally saw in these images, but now I want to share what an expert described to me to really get a better idea and really get an expert opinion of what we see here. However, before I do that, thanks to Factor for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier by delivering fresh, never frozen um, meals directly to your door. I have a very busy schedule and it's very handy to have great meal options like Factor offers here that allow you to just simply um, heat them up and enjoy them. It's definitely a big time saver and it was very handy once again for lunch today being able to just heat up the meal and eat it and not have to do all the prep. Their team of chefs craft great tasting meals using only ingredients with integrity including this roasted tomato and feta cavatappi one that I have here that I just heated up. And when it comes to the flavor of them, I really enjoyed the creamy chicken parmesan uh, meal that I had for lunch. And this particular pasta one looks great. And let me taste it here. That's a great one. I look forward to finishing this in just a little bit. I can definitely recommend this particular one to you. When it comes to meal choices, Factor's menus are updated weekly. And the diversity of Factor's meals is definitely a plus and they offer a keto, calorie smart, chef choice, vegan, plus veggie options, which includes seafood, meat, and plant-based meals. Head over to factor75.com or click the link in the video description and use code CLEANERWATT50 to save 50% off your first box. As I mentioned previously, um, Joe Tegmeyer on July 15th posted these images on Twitter and they give us a great look into the cell production area of Gigafactory Texas. Now there are four different photos here and I sent each one of these four photos to one of my sources and here are some of the observations that were pointed out to me. So starting with image number one, the source did confirm to me that these are indeed generation two 4680 manufacturing machines. Now in the image you can also see large boxes covered with orange plastic and these are apparently waste boxes. So in this section of the factory, when there are waste electrode uh, ribbons here that need to be thrown away for some defect or whatever, they go into the respective bin. One of these bins is dedicated to the anodes, and so the waste anode pieces are put into there, and the other bin is dedicated to the cathodes, and it goes into that bin, and then those bins go to recycling. So it's not wasted in this sense completely. Um, they are recycled, but that's what those bins there are for. This source also relayed to me that when breaking in a new factory, a new battery factory like this, there is a higher amount of waste than normal. And once again, that waste is put into these bins here, this electrode uh, roll waste, and then it's recycled. Now on that note, in Tesla's most recent Q2 2023 conference call, Drew Baglino did say something that does lead me to believe that these scrap rates are already going down quite a bit because Drew Baglino said, referring to the 4680 cell team at Gigafactory Texas, quote, their focus on yield reduced our scrap bill by 40% quarter over quarter, and that resulted in a 25% reduction in cell cost of goods sold. Now moving to image number two, which is just slightly different from image one, I'm actually going to dive into more details that were shared with me. So first of all, it was pointed out that this section of the factory is the tabless work group. And also, once again, these machines here that are shown were confirmed to be second generation 4680 manufacturing equipment. And this is similar to the equipment that was being prototyped 
at um, Tesla's Fremont Pilot Facility, and I talked about this in a video last year. Um, it was called Project Swift, and they were prototyping their second generation uh, production lines at their Fremont facility in a small little section of that facility. And apparently those machines or very similar machines, iterations of those machines have now been installed at Gigafactory Texas. My source also pointed out that these new machines are more efficient when it comes to how many um, employees need to be staffed at each one of the machines. And they also did mention to me as well um, that it reduces the number of machines that are needed by a decent amount as well. Now in a past video, I think this was last year, I did talk a little bit about a three-in-one machine that Tesla was developing that would integrate the notch, wind, and also the welding into a single machine. My source mentioned the fact that these new machines appear to be at least an iteration of that three-in-one machine that Tesla was developing. However, there is a possibility that the welding section um, does have its own enclosed little area but is still pushed up against the other machines. So it is still um, a much tighter package. And I'm guessing there may even be further iterations where this may even be um, more integrated. But nonetheless, these appear to be um, an iteration of a three-in-one machines that do the notching once again, and that do the winding, and that also do the welding all in one machine instead of three separate machines being needed for that process. It's more efficient. And I assume it also allows for a higher volume of cells to come through this machine per hour. Now, another big benefit of having these three machines conjoined, the three-in-one machine that I talked about, the notching, winding, and the welding, all-in-one conjoined machine. This design apparently allowed Tesla to delete the mag rail, which would transport um, cells from one machine to another. And according to my source, the machine that's installed at the Fremont facility, and I'm not sure if it's the same one now or if they've changed it, but the mag rail that was installed there, at least at some point in the past, um, it broke down quite a bit and it was something that would slow down cell progress. So eliminating the need for that altogether, of course, is great. Once again, the best part is no part. The best machine is no machine. So if you can join machines together and eliminate the need to transport a cell from, from machine to machine and eliminate that problem there, that's of course a huge win. Okay, now moving to this third picture. This third picture is interesting because once again, there are a number of 4680 battery cells here on wheeled carts. And I mentioned in the past video that looking at this, it didn't seem normal to me. However, I don't have personal experience manufacturing batteries. So my expert did mention here that really this isn't a big deal and that this is really to be expected um, for a factory because sometimes one group of the manufacturing process will get backed up, say that they need to do maintenance on a machine or they need to repair something. And so one part of the factory gets backed up. Well, since the battery cells can't go to the next section, sometimes um, one part, so this particular part, the tabless group, will hold on to the battery cells while the other part of the factory is getting repaired, getting maintained, or whatever. So that's not a big deal, and it's really not an issue, and it is somewhat normal. My source also mentioned that even at Gigafactory Nevada, this happens. And that's a very experienced team building batteries there, the Panasonic team. So this is normal. And maybe it's a little more common here at the beginning of production even at Gigafactory Texas, but it's not something to be worried about. Now, when it comes to this fourth image, in the last video that I did talking about these images, I mentioned that I was pretty sure that this was formation equipment. And my source, once again, did confirm that this is indeed formation equipment. Now, once again, when it comes to battery cells, before they can be used in a vehicle or whatever end use, they must go through a formation process. And the formation process includes charging these batteries at a low current, um, and also discharging them, testing them. And then also during this process, these battery cells are graded and only the best cells, the A grade cells, make it into vehicles. Specifically, my source called these stacked formation cyclers and also mentioned that each one of these racks holds 64 batteries. In addition, it was pointed out to me the importance of the formation stage of batteries when it comes to the cost of operating a factory. And I mentioned this in the past video, but uh, my source also brought this up, that the formation process makes up around 25% of the final battery value. 
And so this is a very, very important part of the factory. And um, at Battery Day, Tesla talked about a very efficient process, and I'm not sure how much of that is uh, integrated here at Gigafactory Texas, but I assume this is once again a very extremely efficient formation setup that is very likely more efficient than much of the industry. Now, beyond the things that we just discussed that the experts saw in these images, it was also relayed to me things that were not seen in these images and really some ways that um, Gigafactory Texas, the production lines there are apparently more efficient and better than the Fremont pilot facility. So once again, showing that these are the next generation setups, and this is an iteration and an improvement over the Fremont pilot facility. It was mentioned that the Fremont facility has what's called a can ascender, and it was described as a magnetic conveyor belt. And that's what takes uh, products from the tablet section of the Fremont facility up to the second floor where battery cell assembly happens. During the assembly process, several things happen, including um, the electro jelly roll getting put down into the can, um, the electrolyte being filled into the battery can, and of course the can being capped off. Um, that happens during the assembly stage. Now at the Fremont facility, you have the electrode manufacturing section, the tablet group um, on the first floor. Then you have to uh, use the mag rail to transport those, those jelly rolls up to the second floor. This is not ideal because as my source pointed out, that means you're working against gravity. You have to push things up. Unlike the Fremont facility, since this tablet section, this electrode manufacturing section of the factory, since it's on the third floor of the factory, um, they don't need a can ascender apparently. And it eliminates the need to fight against gravity to take these uh, over to the next part of the factory for assembly. My source mentioned that ideally with a factory, you have the beginning steps like the powder mixing and the calendaring happen at one of the upper floors. And then any process that happens after that, when you send it to another work group, when you send that part of the process to another work group, um, that should probably be somewhere further down or at least on the same floor. That way you're not having to fight against gravity. So very likely because of what's seen in these images and due to the fact that you can't see a can assembly here on this third floor in these images, obviously these images don't show everything, but um, this is what the expert was kind of relaying to me. Since a can assembly area cannot be seen, very likely the assembly stage is on a lower floor. So once again, it eliminates the need for that can ascender. And once again, um, the uh, source mentioned to me that the can ascender can break down quite a bit and it's another uh, source of problems for a factory. So eliminating that would also be ideal as well. So it looks like Tesla has done a lot of things with this new setup to be much more efficient. So really to wrap all this up, it does look once again like Tesla has incorporated some important improvements into the Gigafactory Texas cell production um, area here, at least the section that we could see here in these images. And I do want to say thank you to um, the expert who shared this information with me um, and all the time that it took to write the responses. And they were very thoughtful and detailed. So thank you so much for that. And the things that we talked about in this video do seem to fit very nicely with some of the comments that Drew Baglino made in Tesla's most recent Q2 2023 conference call about how at Gigafactory Texas, they have been able to realize several key improvements to the battery equipment, factory density, capital cost, and also utility cost reduction. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. If you're a battery expert, I'd love to hear from you as well. And I haven't mentioned this for a while, but if you have some information that you can share with me um, about battery production or really anything related to electric vehicle production that you believe would be important and could make um, a great content for a future video, something you'd like to share with me, um, feel free to email me. My email address is john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. Again, john, J-O-N, at cleanerwatt.com. I also, once again, want to say a special thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video. Make sure that you click the link in the video description um, and use the code CLEANERWATT50 once again to save 50% off your first box. And also I wanna say a special thank you to all of those of you who support me 
through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.